would be really bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine doing it either. Oh, I think it just pushed us live early. I'm We're live. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, it was giving me a countdown, but it was inaccurate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, hello, everyone out there in Facebook <laughs> land on election day. Mm. We are Chris Muse, Christiane, and Alyssa, and we are here representing the Institute for Erotic Intelligence and the Verdant Collective. And you can, as always, find us on instituteforeroticintelligence.com. And we are here today to talk about a to talk about ceremony, to talk about ceremony as revolution. And we actually have an online weekend immersion coming up where we will enact ceremonies together. And that's coming right up on in 10 days on November 13th. So if you wanna know more about that, you can check us out on the website. We'll have links in the bottom of this, of this talk, this chat as well. So if you're here, if you're on Facebook right now, you've probably already voted. And <laughs> if you haven't, and you are interested in voting, turn your computer off and catch us in the recording. <laughs> but if you are here, you might just want a reprieve from talking about the election. And that's what we're here to do is to talk today about ceremony and our relationship to it, what it means to us, and also what, how, it, how it is in service to re- rebalancing humanity with, with nature and the laws of nature. So, um, so yeah, in thinking about ceremony, the first part of ceremony is after creating an intention, stepping into ceremony is to cross a threshold. And there are so many thresholds in our lives right now. And, and I'm feeling like we today in the U.S. are crossing a threshold. And I'm just wondering, um, Christiane, Alyssa, either one of you, do you agree? Do you feel like we're crossing a threshold today? And, and if, if so, what is that? What does that indicate or even mean to you? Hmm. Well, I, I think now that I'm really thinking about it, um, I'm not sure that I, 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 I certainly think every day is a threshold. Um, I don't know that simply by virtue of, of it being election day, November 3rd, 2020, that, that it is a threshold. I think things are underway, but I don't necessarily think it it is, it has to be a threshold. I'm curious though. I'm curious if you think, if you think differently, Alyssa or Muse, either of you, does it feel like a necessarily a threshold by virtue of it being an election and it's a huge election. So I I'm kind of surprised. I don't just naturally say, hell yeah, this is a major, this is a major threshold, but it almost seems like it, it, for me, it seems like we have yet to see. So that's, that's what I have the feeling about. Mm. Does it feel like a threshold? I don't know. I, <laughs> I was wondering what you mean by we have yet to see, because it certainly feels like, Uh, maybe threshold is the wrong word. Certainly it's a milestone. Like there's something that happens today that has been happening with, I mean, if we just talk about voting, but early voting is a part of that. And then there will be stuff that's counted afterward, but it certainly feels like today is like a marker for a really specific thing that could be crossing a threshold. We're crossing a threshold from what has been for the last four years into what's to come for the next four years. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I do. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> I had to think it out. I had to think it out. <laughs> for me, it, there was something about also into the unknown, crossing a threshold into the unknown. And I mean, we can't ever know, right? We're never in control of what's happening, particularly in, you know, the political halls of Washington. Mm -hmm. Uh, But there was something about like, oh, we're crossing into this thing. And what's on the other side is, is, to me, seems even more uh, unknown, mysterious uh, than ever. The number. So I think that that was part of the gravity of, of how it feels to me. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's what I think around in, in ceremony in general is when we cross that over into that threshold, we're crossing into another time out of, out of the, out of the day world, which I wouldn't say that that's what the U S is necessarily doing now, but we're, but it's a, it's a different, we're in a different realm of experience where we don't know what could happen. And it's our attention and our listening that helps to what, what wants to happen on actually unfold. And there is a way in which the, the mystery of, of what's coming up next, it does seem like it will, it, it is going to require us to sort of dig into our connections with ourselves and each other and our dig into our resilience and resource and dig into what it is that we can do so that we can contribute whatever we can to the mystery that's, mm-hmm. that is to come. So I guess that's how I've been, that's how it's been churning in, in my, in, in my world. In my brain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will say that having crossed a lot of thresholds intentionally in all kinds of ceremonies and experiences feels like it's helped prepare me to sit with all of the unknown that's coming at us. Mm-hmm. Um, and ceremony in general has helped with that. Um, but yeah, there's just a way of having stood on the edge of things so many times and being like, okay, I'm going to do this thing and I don't know what's going to happen and we're going to see and we're just going to roll with what happens and respond as it comes has been super helpful because there are so many unknowns and it can start to feel really fucking scary for me in the last Mm -hmm. couple of weeks, especially. And as I imagine what is to come, I can get super fucking anxious Mm-hmm. And which isn't particularly helpful because mm-hmm. none of it's actually happening now. Mm-hmm. And so leaning back into all these experiences that I have had of dealing with what comes is been really resourcing. Mm-hmm. That struck with me on the edge of something. And that that's another sort of punctuation there for me about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so another thing that was coming up for me when I thinking about ceremony and thinking about it in the context of our industrial cultures and our lives, the -hmm. ceremonies that we have, what we know about and that we've participated in are largely, if not completely human centric. So we think about birthdays, we think about funerals, we think about marriages, we think about brisses, different, different things <laughs> that, <laughs> that are all within this realm of, of humans recognizing and celebrating or honoring uh, passages, a, 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 again, a crossing of, a, of it was this way and now this is the, the next new thing. And that, that tends to be the way that we've engaged in, in ceremony in modern times. And these things are, um, they're also handed to us. They're expected that when we cross these particular milestones that we, that we have a, a ceremony or a celebration around it. And when we talk about ceremony, when we talk about enacting ceremonies, or Alyssa, you were just speaking to, you know, standing on the edge of something, um, the kind of ceremony that we are, are, are talking about and, and enacting is is to create a more generative connection with ourselves in the world. And what I mean by that is um, contributing, contributing, get, we're entering into a gift relationship of what do I have to give with the earth, with the more than human world. And, um, and I just wanted to also hear again, what you all think about, think about that, or, or just have to say about how, how is it, that ceremony becomes something more authentic or, or something more meaningful than the, the ceremonies that we might be familiar with or handed to that have been handed to us. Mm-hmm. I, I love this, this, this uh, perspective that you're bringing us into Muse here to talk about um, ceremony as a way to remember that we are, we are participating in something that is vastly larger and vastly older than just this human centric experience that is our day world lives. Um, and that, that we can pull in uh, the threshold question too here because 
I think one of the things that feels very important about a particular kind of threshold, there is a particular kind of threshold crossing or a particular kind of um, perspective and context that we can have when we cross a threshold um, that, is, that is that perspective that has us decentering ourselves as the, the gravitational force around which, you know, to which and around which all things revolve and evolve and, um, uh, and are magnetized toward, that there's a way to cross from this very, this extremely pathologically human centric experience that we are having uh, in the day world and particularly in Western industrial culture to cross a threshold over into a place where um, there are just an, an uncountable, um, you know, population of beings having their own experiences. And we are a part of that. We are just one part of that. And we're a part of that experience that has caused a, a tremendous impact in part because of our centrism. But to, you know, to imagine that um, perhaps one of the more powerful thresholds we could cross is one that would take us out of this centering of ourselves and our species into, you know, imagine just crossing over, crossing through a gate and on the other side of the gate, all of a sudden your ears hear the stories and the whisperings and the conversations that are happening with all the beings that are having conversations that are all around us all the time that we can't hear because we've been deafened to them. We've been told they don't matter. So um, that somehow, you know, that, that threshold piece in order to have the ceremony you're talking about muse that is, that isn't just an acknowledgement of now I'm old enough to drive a car. And that's very exciting. That's one of the most exciting things that can happen to us as human beings in this culture and as particularly in, in Western industrial culture. Um, but uh, but to, to have the, the ceremony, ceremony begin to be a thing that celebrates our ever unfolding relationship with and intimacy with and uh, dependence on and interdependence with the more than human world, the other than human world requires that we, our ceremony itself, um, all the pieces of that ceremony, all the ritual parts of that ceremony acknowledge that we have to step out of this world and into the world where all the beings are having lives that are as, uh, important and complex and interconnected and autonomous as our human centric lives are. So um, I don't even know if that, is that answering your, is that, is that speaking to what you were talking about? It's speaking <laughs> to the type of ceremony that I'm speaking about. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, do you want to add anything? I, I've got what a thing was the I'm original about. question? <laughs> Just about the different, the, the kind of ceremony and what's the difference between the ceremony that are, that are ceremonies that are very human centric mm -hmm. that we, we were born into if we were born into industrial culture. And if we've been exposed to indigenous cultures or animist cultures, we might already have a different relationship to it. But um, just what, what, what is the difference here? How are we holding ceremony in, in oh. our, in our own personal lives and also in our offerings? Yeah. I mean, this sort of, I think dovetails with what Christiane was saying, but there's so much, it's so much more interesting. It's <laughs> a funny, I don't know, it feels funny to say, it's so much more interesting when it's inclusive of more than just these human experiences or the, when it's more than human centric. And, um, and it feels so much more supportive as well. Like we, Christian and I sort of talked about this last week and we can put the link to that conversation um, in the comments here, but just how acknowledging that it, doing ceremony that acknowledges that we are embedded in belonging that is more than just 
human beings um, does so much for us in, on a nervous system, neurological level. But it's also, I'll go back to what I was speaking to about the anxiety happening to me around this election. It's like knowing that um, there's so much more out there than this election. Things that will continue on no matter what happens, which isn't the like, oh yeah, life goes on, whatever. There could be huge impact in my life and our lives based on what happens in this election. Um, probably either way it goes, no matter which way it goes, there's going to be a big impact. So it's not, I'm not saying like, oh yeah, it's going to be fine because life goes on. It's like connecting in with these deeper currents of life with a capital L and acknowledging that and being resourced there rather than in this sort of superficial way that we tend to live life in industrial culture from day to day um, feels like it's the main thing that keeps me from losing my mind most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and ceremony is a big part of that because it feeds that connection, reminds me of that connection, reminds me of that. It feels so much more than connection. It's like an embedment mm -hmm. in this larger thing that's moving through me that doesn't it's not personal like it doesn't really care about my individual life but I can be feeding it and then feeding it in the world through ceremony through all kinds of other things and you know we we called this ceremony for the revolution and it feels like that's the sort of revolution that we're really proponents of which can look like all sorts of different things mm -hmm. but it's revolution that comes from tending to and embedding ourselves in this larger understanding of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I wanna highlight where you say tending to or contributing to, because I, I was thinking this morning in the shower about when I was on a vision quest, which was a 13 day out in the, out in the wilderness um, quest. and and it was very ceremony. It was ceremonies within ceremonies. And so many people approach these things and, and in, at, me too, me included around, Oh, what's going to happen. What am I going to get as a, mm -hmm. as a, as a, is a hawk going to swoop in and tell me a secret? Am I going to, am I going to, you know, get my purpose by, you know, through listening to the whispers of the winds and, and, and there was this way that, uh, that our guides were so brilliant uh, helped to reframe about entering into this gift relationship and mm -hmm. how can I give my attention, my exquisite attention to, to being in a conversation with capital L life, like mm -hmm. you said, so that how can I make myself so beautiful that the world can't help but notice that I can be in this conversation, that, that there is something here that's so, so much bigger and so much beyond me getting a thing and bringing it back, but that the gift that I get to bring back is birthed from that thing that I'm actually offering and giving. And that, that just struck me so well and, and has stuck with me ever since. And it feels, you know, when I think about the ceremony that I might enact in this weekend that we're doing next weekend, it's it, to me, it, it has to be about that. It has to be really centered in, getting out of being self-centered as much and, and coming into this deeper level of, of listening. And um, yeah, and it just, it, ch it really changes so, so much about, you know, these things that, that we think mean everything. That's such a big deal, this and this and this. And we, you know, we, we brace ourselves and fight and get tense and kind of get smaller. And there, and when we can, and all of these things absolutely do matter. And, leaning back into that web of support because we're in relationship with, with life outside of human centric life is, can be so, so supportive and bring so much wholeness and wellness, even in this, this tension and the, and the grief and the, and the, the angst of, of our time. Mm -hmm. Lisa? That, yeah. Either one of you. <laughs> that I just want to, I want to say, that was beautiful. Yeah, that was so beautiful. Just, um, and hearing some more specifics of your experience in the quest space and 
the the fast space vision fast space is really i think it's really inspiring as we look into coming into next as we're coming into next weekend mm -hmm. um and even just opening the portal to the process it's so lovely to hear your reminder yeah mm -hmm. Your, your reminder about how to bring ourselves into that space and what might come from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we can certainly, oh, sorry, Alyssa, you were saying something. Well, I don't know. It feels related to so much of what you've said, Muse, but you haven't used this language, um, which is that our relationship with life, capital L, life is so reciprocal. It's not just us receiving from it. It's also not just us giving to it. It's very much a two-way thing. And um, I've been, we talked about this last week as well, but I've been reading Rob, what is her name? Robin Wall Kimmerer's book, um, Braiding Sweetgrass. And she speaks about so beautifully, both from this animist, very ceremonial lens and from the lens of a botanist, because she's both of those things. And um, like PhD level botany which is yeah she doesn't go into that much detail which is great for me but um but that there there are these like if we're gardening if we're growing food the relationship between us and whatever we're growing is hugely reciprocal because the plants wouldn't be getting what they need without our support and um and that happens, that's a really concrete way that that happens. And I think it happens in all kinds of other ways that are less tangible. Um, but it's such a, that feels like it's so important to remember that we're contributing in and to start tracking how am I actually doing that? What does that actually look like in my life? How am I, you know, spreading the seeds? Yeah. Just by being myself without even doing something beyond just being who I am nestled into my particular spot in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then if I'm going to, if I'm going to do this weekend program that we've got this weekend immersion experience that we have next weekend, uh, arrow ceremony and belonging. And I'm, and I'm listening to you and I'm taking your prompt here then it seems to me that I would ask myself to spend some time listening for the ceremony that is waiting for me to step into it, mm -hmm. that is already somehow unfolding and, it's, and it requires me. It, it, the missing ingredient is me, but it's already there. So I'm not over here saying, now let's see, I'm about to turn 55 and that means, okay, so I'll do a ceremony that marks my 55th year and I'm going to do some listening and I'm going to have all the ritual things that I do in my ceremony that I might actually take a step back from that. And I might, I might still acknowledge, wow, I'm turning 55. I'm a 55 year old woman, woman in a culture that, you know, does all this stuff about age and females and women and, but to listen deeper to well what ceremony is 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 waiting for me to step into it as this 55 year old woman that feels very different to me and actually it because i haven't thought about it exactly that way before um has me thinking of all sorts of different things and 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 almost as if i'm hearing right now um with you all i'm hearing from all these others out here about, you know, about the ceremony. So it feels very different. So what if it matters to more than just me and my human people around me um, or what I'm gonna get from this ceremony? What if something bigger matters um, that we avail ourselves to in the ceremonial space that allows for something so much, much greater to continue to unfold, that we, taking a card from your deck, Alyssa, that we of course benefit from because we're embedded in a system whose wellness is completely interrelated and completely generous. So what ceremony is out there waiting for us to 
to participate in, to step across that threshold and to participate in. Mm -hmm. That sounds, that's very exciting to me to think about. (laughs) Yeah, it is exciting. It is exciting. And that could also sound daunting to someone who's like, what, wait, I'm just starting to listen. What if nothing says anything to me, (laughs) you know, but I also, but I, but I have an idea. Like I know that this part of my life is I bring to completion and this I'm bringing in and, and all of that's okay too. You know, if you're feeling a curiosity or a tug or a, mm, I, I like that, but I have no idea. I, I, what if I get it wrong? I'm, I'm nervous. I'll, I do the wrong thing. That, that's one of the reasons why we're, we are calling us together to be in each other's arms through this self-design ceremony. And you can certainly do ceremony on your own as the only human, but given that there are so few guides or models or um or even uh weavers to help weave together the the weekend is going to include um us us bringing our our thoughts our initial thoughts and ideas together us helping to design the ceremony that you would be doing on your own on the land in the middle of the weekend and then you know one of the most important things if you're doing ceremony in community is to bring that back bring the gift back and share what is possible now? What, what has changed? What, what's the, who, who, to welcome you, to welcome you back in. And Mm -hmm. so you really don't actually have to know anything about this Mm -hmm. animist kind of style of ceremony to take the first step in, you know, we've all, we all did it for our first time at one point or another. And so if this is your first time or you're curious about your first time, um, check check out the the page. Check out the site. See if you're interested, curious. Send us a message if you'd like, and we would really we'd really love to have you um, have you with us this weekend and uh, and and continue to to generate more of our wellness that comes from from the roots, from the bottom from the bottoms of our own bodies and and way into the core and the center of the earth and the way that we can be in this reciprocal relationship with, with other humans that are uh, in line with our values and also with the more than human world. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Muse. Mm -hmm. So I think with that, we've done it. We're we're almost at a half an hour point. We've Mm -hmm. done it. (laughs) <laughs> that's it back over the threshold <laughs> this conversation is always ongoing with us uh so yeah if, if you're if now is not the right time for you still consider going to our website checking us out sign up um sign up to receive our emails and and hear more about what we're up to mm-hmm yeah. Yeah. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Bye. Stay sane.